All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And if you've watched the channel for any length of time, tonight I'm gonna be going over a new product from a company that you may be familiar with. And the reason being is in my enclosure that sits just to the left of the command terminal here, uh, you'll notice I've got my longer B130 watt. Uh, I've been running that machine for quite a while and I've had really good luck with it. Longer has launched a new product and I uh, thought it might be something that a few people may be interested in. If you're wanting to do large projects and large engraves, then this probably isn't going to be for you. But if you've wanted to get into doing some laser engraving for maybe small things, uh, the size of a coaster and smaller just for general engraving, maybe to put your mark on some of your woodworking products, if you make custom pins, that type of thing. This might be something you're interested in. It's small, compact, and can be easily tucked away and put in a closet when not in use if you don't have the space to dedicate to something like this. So that's what we're gonna be discussing today is we're gonna be going over the new Longer Nano, but we're just gonna be kind of doing a quick look over of the machine, the build quality, how it works, and the basic functions and the possible accessories that you can get to go with it to even expand out to 100 by 400 millimeter work area by use of a movable bed. So if that's something you're into, stick around. We'll be right back. All right, guys, unlike most machines, uh, this machine is nearly completely assemble when you get it so i'm going to run through the unboxing here because it's kind of talk to you about what's in the box and the parts putting it together it's going to be really quick but then we're going to go over the machine itself uh, some of the uses for it the advantages and the disadvantages of the smaller size that it has so let's check out the unboxing and the assembly right quick all right guys so this is going to be relatively quick you take out the top piece of foam that's the module. You can see it's got a lens cap on there. Don't forget to take that guy off before you start trying to test it. Uh, this box here has the power supply in there. It's not all that big. The machine doesn't consume a whole lot of electricity, uh, but you simply plug that into the wall and in the back of the machine, you're good to go. Uh, next coming out of the box, let's see what we go for here. Uh, material pack. Uh, those are just a few little like complimentary pieces of material that work with the machine that you can try out and uh, you kind of get the get the uh, urge to burn something taken care of without having to go shopping for materials. So that was pretty handy. Uh, here's the cables, uh, cables for connecting the module to the base and connecting the base to, or the module to your computer. Here is the little safety cover and it is red, has that fan on it. There is no filter in the fan. Uh, but that also plugs into the back of the module. We'll go over where everything connects here in a minute. And inside this box is your handy uh, complimentary safety glasses, which I would recommend wearing glasses with this machine. Like I said, it, it has that shield, but I, I get the feeling a lot of people are gonna not wanna use the shield and just use it with the glasses. So uh, the glasses are green, which are kind of contrary to the red cover that comes with the machine, but as long as they protect your eyes, uh, I guess there's no fashion statement to be made with the color of the glasses. Uh, next, coming out of the box here, you've got to uncover this base and get all those little pieces of foam out of there. This is the base. And basically, that's the only two parts that you have to put together. And it, and it is in there kind of snugly. Uh, but the base and the module attach. And that's pretty much your assembly. Of course, I have left parts in boxes before, so I'm gonna make sure to check and make sure I didn't leave anything behind. All right guys, so as you saw in the video, not a lot to it. Uh, it takes just a few minutes and you've got it up and running. Now, this machine is made to be operated either using the app that they uh, provide or Lightburn. Me personally, when they asked me about trying the machine, I told them that I wanted to try it out if it would work with Lightburn and it is compatible with Lightburn. Uh, the other functions, there's some macros and things like that. It gets a little more complicated using the other uh, add-ons in uh, Lightburn, but running it with just a flat carriage uh, so far, uh, it's, it's fairly simple, easy to set up. So unlike most machines, guys, where I have to kind of bring the camera over and show you around the machine today, 
because of the size of this guy. We're just going to kind of hold it <laughs> and we're going to go through the different parts of the machine. Now, I'm going to take this guy off and put it out of the way. Uh, this is the shield that comes with it. It's got magnets there, a little small fan in the back. You might could connect a hose to that, but this is not a machine that I look for people to be wanting to enclose. Uh, but, but it has a little fan there. The fan has a wire that plugs into the back of the machine where the rest of the terminals are, and we'll go over that in just a second. And this provides you some eye protection while the machine is running in case you have cats or small kids uh, because the beam does travel quite a distance down to the material. So something to consider. All right, so with the machine, this is, this is it, guys. It's, it's not big at all, thus the name Nano, okay? Uh, before we go too in-depth, I will tell you, it has this bottom plate right here. Uh, I've got mine trapped in there using these two little uh, jig-type devices that they, they shipped with it. But you can actually take these off, and the plate comes out. So if you're somebody that does woodworking projects and you want to engrave... Uh, your logo or whatever on your woodworking project and that's all you need it for this is this is how you would run that uh, this basically is a diode laser in the form of a galvo now with that said your work area because of the way the machine is built is limited to about four inches by four inches i've been able to run a 10 by 10 light burn speed and power test on it successfully so a coaster is going to be about the biggest work piece that you can do I have been using a few of my, my little four inch mirrors. Uh, I've been playing with those and it will, it will engrave uh, the mirrors. The LPI on this machine, I will tell you, due to the dot size of the, the machine, you're gonna have to run the LPI unusually high. I'm gonna say probably about twice what you would with the typical five or 10 watt diode. And I believe that's due to the way that it focuses and that focus point being so precise that I'm having to run a little higher LPI to make sure I don't have any, any dots or any leave inside the area of the engrave. But the machine is very, very, very compact. Uh, everything's put together. The assembly is pretty much with these little uh, hand nuts here that you can turn by hand. For the most part, when you get it, you'll have these two pieces, but not necessarily put together. Uh, and it comes and this little box right here, which is actually a pretty decent box if you were gonna actually take it apart and put it back, stow it away. Uh, maybe you just wanna use it for events or something like that to do small stuff with. You could stow it back in here. Now, as I said, the little red cover, to me it's a little cumbersome because you have to put this on and then get the focus, and there's this little slit at the bottom, but it's, it's kinda, it's, it's kind of tough, but I have found that if you're doing three millimeter material or so, if you let this down until right as it touches the base plate, then once, it's, once this sits on the surface of the material, you should be focused. It does have, and I'll, I'll have some video clips that I'm gonna show you of this thing in action too as we go, guys. So just keep an eye out over here somewhere, uh, and I'll throw some, some B-roll of the machine working uh, in there. It does have, in order to use the machine, you have these, these little arrow buttons here. Uh, those will raise and lower the head to set the focus. And the way you set the focus is if you look here on the front, this little button right here, that turns on the blue and the red laser and you would raise it or lower it until those get side by side. Once they get side by side, the machine's focused and you're ready to engrave. Uh, it does have wireless capabilities according to the software, but I think that's only for the app. Uh, I, have, I have not used it or tried to use it with Wi-Fi, but on the back of the module here, uh, you can see these are all of the plugs for the different attachments. You got power. I'm gonna have to look at them, I've got it memorized. You got power here, you've got your computer connection there. Uh, this is for the, the chuck and the base. This connector here simply connects to down here. You know, we, we probably could have done without the one cable, but it makes it a little more portable and handheld. So you could technically use just this machine here if you had a way to hold it steady to do engraving. Uh, that plug there actually goes to the fan that's on the shroud. So all your connections are on the back of the machine. Uh, it, does, it does a pretty decent job as far as a 10 watt engraving only machine. 
but it actually will cut. So now I want to go over some of the results I've had, some of the mediums that I've tested, and just kind of show you what the machine is capable of. All right, guys, so first off, we've already went over the glass, uh, which glass, mirror, whichever way you would like to look at it. Uh, and you can see that I was able to get the coating off of it. So if you're wanting to do like painted mirrors or uh, mirrors with a little bit of a frosting, you can do, do it with this machine down towards the bottom, the slower, faster speeds down there. It's actually got a little bit of frosting. And keep in mind uh, the LPI on this, the interval is only 0.2. And like I said, I recommend going up maybe twice what you would normally run on LPI with this machine because the dot is very tiny. Uh, and I, I determined that based on the fact that it will, if the line interval is not small enough, you don't get really good coverage with it. So I would say start out with this machine at around 250 on your LPI just for general engraving. If you're doing anything really, really fine, you can go up from there. That's what, that's what I've been doing on a lot of the engraves that I did. So glass is an option with this machine, mirrors especially. It does a pretty decent job of that. Uh, one other thing that I've had some people ask me about, uh, my friend May May, uh, y'all know she does paper crafting, and a lot of the ladies from May May's channel are always asking me, can you do engraving on paper with lasers? Well, if you're wanting to do little small things with paper, cutting out shapes for scrapbooking or making things to go, you know, kind of like embellishments, I guess you would say, for your scrapbook, like you want to make little signs, you want to make little shapes, cut out little you know, shapes in the shape of a dog or a cat, maybe even do some engraving. This is just regular craft paper. And I made a danger laser in use sign, a little tiny one, uh, with the paper. Uh, this is yellow, but it works on other colors as well. You will have to do a couple of speed and power tests to determine your settings. And uh, that may take a minute, but once you get those settings and you're gonna be either saved in Lightburn or written down, then you can uh, make little paper craft projects like this. Uh, this would be really handy if you're wanting to like do desktop, the little folding cards that you set on desks for events and stuff like that. Uh, paper is a good medium, but it's overlooked a lot of times with lasers because there's so many other printers out there. But the, the thing about a laser is you can actually mark on the paper and cut it out kind of all in one fail swoop. Now, remember, paper's flammable. Most things you're gonna be doing with this machine is flammable, so keep a little bottle of water handy where you can spritz it if it catches on fire. But engraving on anodized aluminum, like I said, with the LPI turned up on the machine, it does a really, really good job on uh, anodized aluminum. And with really detailed graphics and enough LPI, you can get some, some really great results so that's another thing that if you're wanting to get this machine to do like little custom cards or gift cards or whatever, it's very capable. And it's relatively quick doing these. I think I was running the speed at like 150 millimeters a second. For something this small, uh, that's pretty quick, even with a diode laser. Uh, that's the advantage of the Galvo because it technically has no moving parts externally other than the carriage raises up and down to set the focus. But when it's engraving, it more or less just sits still and the beam goes back and forth and does what it's supposed to do. Uh, I decided I wanted to see how it would engrave on the 4.5 millimeter Luan that I run a lot of, and it done a really good job. Uh, this machine does, because of the way it works, it's kind of like the fiber machines. It does seem to kind of give a little cleaner look if you run uh, crosshatch on your engraves. It takes a little longer, but in some instances, it seems like you can get a little darker uh, finish using crosshatch. So some of these I did crosshatch, some of them I didn't. I think with this speed test, I did not. So 4.5 millimeter material, it's a little bit excessive for a 10 watt machine, especially a Galvo, because most Galvos do not cut really well. Uh, so I decided I would play around with a little bit of three millimeter basswood just to see what kind of an engraving I could get as far as the color and contrast with this machine. And so I did a little contrast and color testing with some basswood. And as you can see, done a pretty good job. So if you're wanting to engrave on basswood, it is very doable with this machine and you get nice contrasting colors. There's no fade, there's no, you don't have to strain to see the engrave, it's nice and crisp. So 
for what it is, the size of the machine, it was actually really well. Now, so the next thing that I did is I decided, huh, I think I'm going to try to do some cutting with it. Galvos do not cut well normally, uh, but with this machine, this is a speed and power test that I did, and I had the test settings for the text incorrect, and it did not mark it. Uh, so I went back, realized where I had went wrong on that one, and I did another one on another piece of the three millimeter basswood. And as you can see, uh, definitely got some nice clean drops. And considering that this machine does not have uh, air assist and the beam is literally traveling that far, I thought it turned out really well as far as the cut goes because basswood's bad to yellow anyway. Uh, but it didn't, it didn't do it all that, all that bad with this machine. And you can see eight millimeters a second, it's cutting this three millimeter basswood at eight millimeters a second, all the way through the power range right there. So I think that would be definitely the sweet spot where I would be cutting and maybe run like eight millimeters a second, hundred percent power. That way, if you get a little tough pocket, you got a little extra oomph to make it through it. But I was rather pleasantly surprised that it would cut. I've tried out a couple of other Galvo machines and they didn't cut that well. And when they did cut, it was just, it was burning everything and just didn't look good. So I was a little surprised <clears throat> that this one cuts as well as it did. But uh, as you can see, I've got a few little pieces of B-roll footage right here. Uh, the beam, it travels a long way. It comes to that fine point right at the material and that's where it does the cutting. So it done a, done a pretty good job considering it's a Galva. All right guys, so at the time of this video, the machine is technically still in Kickstarter phase. Uh, I went to the Kickstarter page to see what the retail price was listed as, and they've got it listed for, I think it says $2.99. So if you're looking for a cheap, affordable way to mark things that are small, uh, and you may or may not want to do a little bit of cutting with say paper, cardboard, three millimeter, uh, plywood or maybe some three millimeter acrylic uh, this might be something that you want to look into there's a cat by the way <laughs> this might be something you want to look into uh, the portability of it the, the small footprint of the machine the ability for almost anybody to be able to pick this thing up plug everything in and get it going literally on the top of a bar stool if you want to makes it really really portable <clears throat> now, with really, really portable comes limitations. Work area, power output, those are the two biggest limitations I see with this machine. The third limitation is you're either going to have to come up with a way of putting you a little acrylic enclosure around it or something if you want to use it on a regular basis or have it in a ventilated area, especially if you're going to be doing uh, stuff other than just, you know, glass and things that don't produce a lot of smoke. Uh, it does still produce smoke when engraving. Uh, I've, I've tested it on anodized materials, the mirrors, and because there's no real filter in this little cover, you're just gonna get the smoke. That's the machine, guys. I don't typically try out machines that are this small, but a lot of you guys have said that you, you wanna get in the lasers, you wanna do it cheap, but you don't have a lot of room, and you don't have a lot of, uh, of, of places to store it. So when Longer reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in trying out this machine? I'm happy with my Longer 30 watt. It's done me a good job. So I figured why not? I'll try the machine out and see how it fares. And like I said, for what it is, the work area and everything, I think it does, it does a good job. Uh, but if you're gonna be wanting to make big things, this is just gonna be more or less a gateway into the world of lasers. You can learn how to use light burn, how to design a light burn. You can learn all of the basics with this machine and then if you choose to, you could always upgrade. But for what is listed currently at $299 on the Kickstarter, it's a, it's, it's a pretty simple way of getting started in Lightburn for doing small projects. So that's all I got on the machine at this time, guys. But uh, Longer just asked me to reach out and let you guys know what I thought about it. And so there it is, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.